what if you could throw a knife and then have it come back to you with just a snap of your fingers, as if you were magic? I got this idea two months ago when I first saw this video. Check this out. Nah, that is so cool. And I love the original idea so much that I built it. Well, tried to build it. This sucks. But something changed my mind. Oh, oh. This is the face of pure joy. Oh, oh. I can't lie, this is super fun. I was left with only one thought. But I can definitely make it better. And just like that, my mind was made up. I'm gonna capture that magic that inspired me in the first place. So here's the plan. Listen, I didn't say it was a good plan, just a plan. And for this plan to work, I need something to do the pulling. And you can see in his video, he's still using a coil spring. That isn't going to work for me. One, because a coil spring is limited by its size and material. And two, because it's a metal spring, there's no real way of turning it on or off, so that's a problem. So instead, I'm going to be using this, a DC motor. It's rated for 12 to 24 volts, which is probably too much, but I'll deal with that later. Then we need something to collect the line as the motor spins. And so I need a spool. I don't have one currently, but I know where to get one. Then of course we need the knife and the line to connect the knife to the spool. And for that connection, I was thinking fishing line. It's thin, strong, and made for this type of force. So it just feels like it would be perfect for this kind of design. Then of course, we also need the knife. I got this off Amazon and I made a sleeve out of paper towels and tape. Now this isn't going to be its final form. I just need to make sure that the core build works properly before adding all the cool stuff. Now honestly, I have no idea if this is going to work, as well as the master plan is my only plan. So if it doesn't work, I may just have to accept that the magic is going to die, which is a serious possibility. But I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that, that doesn't happen. So now that we know what we're doing, it's time to start building the prototype. There's only one problem. One of the most important components I need may or may not still be inside of the dog leash. But luckily, I've come prepared. And after this, that, and the other, I was finally able to get what I needed. Uh... <coughs> Sorry. We finally have the two most important parts Parts, the spool and the motor and it was already spinning on its own just not very well now I just need to figure out how to combine oh. the two because this isn't going to work it's spinning. no matter how excited I am yeah. Yeah. So I need to connect the spool to the motor. And when thinking of ways to do this, I noticed that the motor already has a hole in it. So what I did was drill two holes through the spool and then connected them tightly with the screw to avoid any wobbling or weird noises. And then I did a test to see if everything was working how I wanted it to. Well, it's not supposed to sound like that. That wobble that I was trying so hard to avoid, didn't avoid it. There it is. But at least it's not gonna fall off now. So I need to fix that wobble. So if you look closely, you can see that there's too much space right at the beginning of the spool. I need to fix that. And I I was thinking of ways to fix this issue until I remembered tape exists. After applying the tape, I did another test. And on the second test, you can see that there's still a wobble, but it's way smoother. Oh my god. And now we just need to connect the knife to the spool so we can actually start testing this out. And since this spool came from a dog leash, I'm just gonna attach the fishing line where the dog leash used to be it's finally time to start testing the design. And like I said previously, I don't have a plan B. This test is the turning point. If this prototype doesn't work, I'll be forced to start back at square one and I'll likely just scrap the video. So needless to say, this test is really important. This one first. Oh God, I hope you can see that because that is so crazy. Fun. Oh, wow. That is intense. So honestly, that test went great, and I learned a lot. The main thing being that this design is going to work. Then I learned that 9 volts is a bit intense, and we're not even at the lower range of the capabilities of this motor. So that's a little scary, but I'm not, I'm not scared. I'm not scared at all. I also learned what we need to get rid of and what we need to upgrade. So here's what's going on. Firstly, I need a new spool. This one is way too heavy, and I just know I can do better. And so I did. Oh, wrong hand. And then I also need a casing. I'm still waiting on that one. Then lastly, I need an on off switch. Currently, I have no way to control the power to the motor besides just removing the battery. So obviously I need to fix this. The only problem is that I'm not what some would describe as particularly talented. And I also have no idea how electricity works. But while waiting on the casing, it gives me time to figure it out. And after a little bit of research and a lot of bit of help from my dad, I was able to set up this contraption in about 45 minutes. It's a turnstile switch where the more you turn the dial, the more power that gets supplied to the motor. And there was nothing wrong with it, not even a little bit. Oh shit. 
Even though the smoking and the sparks wasn't really a part of the agenda, I still learned a lot and I feel ready to move on. And because we know that the core build works properly, it's time to move from prototype to final build. And one of the key features of the final build is the snapping mechanism. So I need some way of controlling the motor with just touching my fingers. I do have a plan for that, but we'll get to that in a second because I have a few other things that I need. Then I also need to redesign the spool. This one is good and it works much better than the previous one, but it's too large and there's no way of attaching a casing to it. And we also still need the casing. The casing needs to be able to come apart just in case the line gets tangled or anything and I need to get inside of it. And my brother is going to print the spool and the casing together to ensure that they fit cohesively. Now all of these things I need to do are pretty overwhelming, but I do have a few ideas. So let me introduce you to my master plan part two. So the idea is to create a 3D printed platform that can house the motor and also attach to my arm. Then I'll do the same for a small battery pack on my wrist. After that, I just need to make the finger pads. That'll create an open circuit between the motor and the battery. And then have some sort of conductive material on my fingertips, so that when I put my fingers together, like to snap, it'll turn the motor on for as long as those materials are touching. Which, if you think about it, this design makes me the on-off switch, which is so cool. But anyways, here's a little example of me testing it out. Just imagine that the tinfoil is wrapped around my fingers. So if I do this, it should turn on the motor, and it does, so that is good. So now I just need to make a configuration that allows this to happen smoothly, while also being attached to my arm. Now I could put it all on a gauntlet, but I don't want to copy him bar for bar, so what I came up with was a sleeve. I know this isn't the prettiest representation, but this gets the point across. And the reason that I want to go in this direction is because I think it'll be much more comfortable, as well as I only have to put it all together one time. And I want to express my gratitude for my dad and my brother's help on this. So can we spam goaded fam in the comments below? Preferably with the sunglasses emoji and maybe some fires if you're feeling up to it. They'd appreciate it. Thank you. So the first thing I did was get all the parts I needed printed. And the pieces for the casing and the spool looked good at first. Okay, so we're definitely going to need to reprint that. And so, I reprinted them. And even though I struggled to get the casing on this time, these pieces were way better. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this is so much better. Now that everything for the motor is working properly, it's time to move on to the platform. Which also gave me some troubles. Yeah! Hard as hell to get on there, man. And even though it was a struggle, it also fit onto the motor. And after a lot of thinking and even more tape, it was finally time to find out if I successfully captured that magic or if this was just a giant waste of time. Dude, I think it actually might work. Let's see. <laughs> Throw it. And... <laughs> okay. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> well, that ain't good. This was not what I wanted to see. Or hear. And to be honest with you, I thought that was it. I think that's wraps, guys. But I didn't want to give up that easily. So I took it back, took out all the fishing line, redid it, and then tried again for attempt number two. And if this doesn't work, I don't have any other ideas on how to fix this. So this is my last attempt. All right, so we are back again. Hopefully this time it actually works. Last time didn't go very well, but uh, we'll see how it goes this time. Man. Come on, please, man. And once again, it broke immediately. And to add insult to injury, it keeps zapping me. Every time I use it, it zaps my finger. Oh my gosh. Oh, dang. This is not going to work. So the device failed for many reasons, and unfortunately, that's just how it goes sometimes. So if you like this video, I think you'll definitely like this video. Check it out.